Welcome to my moulding shop. Um, this is the uh, back of my shed. We've got a moulding bench here, good solid bench, uh, a trough or a tray uh, made out of a bit of old wood. This holds the, uh, the sand, the green sand moulding we're going to do today. This is um, a clay bearing sand coming from Mansfield, uh, North East Midlands town, Mansfield Red. It looks black because it's burned and it's, um, it's, some of it's 20 years old now and uh, it's, it's still, still going strong. You can sort of uh, rejuvenate it by putting some uh, fresh Mansfield red sand in. Obviously you sieve this. If you sieve it you put some air into it and make it more porous, lets the gases out. Also there's bentonite clay this sprinkled on, handful of this sprinkled onto the sand and this will sort of um, rejuvenate it, get the uh, get the stand so it's bonding together. Now we temper it with water. How much water we put in? Well if you squeeze it into a ball it should hold its shape. It shouldn't really stick to your hand so that's a good indication. If it all sticks to your hand it's too wet. If it doesn't form a ball and breaks up it's too dry. So that's our sand. We've uh, got the pattern. Uh, this is Frank's pattern, made in aluminium. It itself is going to be a pattern. We're going to do two of these to form a split pattern um, mounted on pins. And he's going to use that for the rear wheel of a little traction engine he's building. Right, so we put that on the board. We've got the, um, the drag, which is the bottom of the flask or moulding box. And that is going to end up that road round. But we put that on the moulding board and uh, the pattern sits in the middle. Uh, a bit of parting powder, dusting with parting powder. This is the same stuff as the wet sand, but uh, instead of tempered with water, it's tempered with oil and it's called an uh, oil bonded sand. It's man's bond, which is Mansfield red sand um, mixed with oil. And the beauty of this is it takes a a better impression. Um, in fact you could even cast your thumbprint off this it, it really does get the detail. Uh, also it's uh, it acts as a barrier to the uh, to the damp or wet sand I'm going to put on top afterwards and uh, the molten metal going into the flask or into the sand it, it doesn't uh, generate so much steam and uh, you know steam and uh, in a mould it, it can create porosity and, uh, and defects in your, uh, in your casting so we back it up with um, this water tempered or green sand um, the reason we do this is because the oil bonded sand's a little bit on the expensive side or can be a little bit more expensive and it just tends to um, it's only need you really as a facing sand and we just tap it down with our wrapping stick and uh, the board make sure that sits nice and flat and we turn it over right so that's going to be our split line that is um, there we go like that that's our split line we put the uh, the cope on now, so this is the right way up, this is the way we pour it. Um, we've got this little pin that's going to fit into the, the centre there. This is the way the metal will be poured down. More dusting, more parting powder. This is to stop it sticking to the, the sand, sticking to the sand that's already there. A bit more oil bonded just to give us that, uh, that, that barrier again, as I say, and it'll help with the. Uh, It'll help with the impression, a nice thing. It, uh, it will e it's easier to get the pattern out of that uh, out the sand. This uh, green sand, water tempered sand, it's a little bit fragile and when you come to get it out you'll see that it's a little bit more difficult. 
with the oil bond it's sandy it but it'll get better. Right, a bit more wrapping. You don't want to knock too much out of it because uh, you want it porous, you want those gases to get out of the mould and um, your casting not to have any uh, porosity so you know you don't want to you don't want to ram it too hard. The beauty of this bench like this you can just scoop it up and anything any excess sand falls back into the uh, tray to be used again. So like that. Just strike that off. Was like that there, like that. We blow, swizzle that, um, the spoon, the spoon for making a little pouring cup, that's uh, like so, for a bit of a blow again, and like that, and um, before I fetch that out I want to vent it, uh, venting very important, put a 1 16th wire, uh, plenty, of, plenty of holes in the uh, sand, the idea again letting all those hot gases out, um, would, uh, if you don't uh, vent it, you can have a bit of a blowback, you know, the metal can spit back at you a bit. So it uh, don't, don't, doesn't happen too often for me, but I, I like to bang a few holes in. So there you go. Plenty of holes. Plenty of venting. I'll show you another method of venting in a minute that's, uh, that's quite effective. <coughs> Blow that off again. Do with a little compressor in here and just give it a whistle. Right, we'll get that up there. This is something I've made up, uh, it creates the pouring cup, a nice solid pouring cup because we don't want bits falling down into the uh, into the metal and uh, it, uh, it just consolidates that uh, pouring cup, makes it nice and firm and uh, there we go. So we've got the vents, we've got the pouring cup and now we can separate it and you'll see that coming up like that. I just want to clear out that little bit because those little bits will fall into the uh, into the casting if I'm not careful. A bit of blow again, and uh, now's the time to get our pattern out. Now, this is the bit where we use a, I'm using a screw in the middle of there, and uh, it's called wrapping. And uh, the idea is to loosen that pattern like that. Now, the problem here lies is that. If you wrap too much, you'll shear the sand off uh, in between these spokes, and obviously they'll be floating around. Um, so you've got to sort of just go for a nice gentle wrap, a nice straight lift, gentle lift, not too much shaking hands. Well, just give it a little rock as I lift it out, and gentle, straight, straight up, and there we go. Patterns out. That's leaving uh, a void for the metal to pour into. Uh, just a gentle blow. You don't want to go too mad because you'll, you know, bits will blow up, blow off. Um, and that that's ready for pouring. So the coat goes back onto the drag like that, and uh, there we go. That's ready for pouring. So I'll leave it at that. <laughs> 